My name is Per Pifinaspos. I work at the University Library at UIT, the Arctic University of Norway. I'm here to talk about data management plans, and I'm joined by Michaela Askan, a professor in fisheries, biology and management, uh, and also vice dean for research education at one of the major faculties here at UIT. First of all, Michaela, uh, what is a data management plan? Oh, it's rather, uh, can be rather short and simple, but it can be complicated as well. So it depends on how big a project you are in. But for a PhD project, I would expect that you have a very clear, good name for your data set or your data sets. And you probably refer to the project that funded this. So you would have a reference to, to the kind of complies with, with the other project members uh, as well. But then you need to describe your data. What, how do you achieve this data? What kind of variables are you having in here? And very often when we talk about data, uh, data management plans, we think of data sets, numbers, or um, kind of uh, descriptive information, or uh, numbers of or lengths of animals, or something like that. But also text can be considered data if you're a social scientist or have kind of an interview or something in, in place. So, the, so you kind of describe your data, what variables you have, or in what format you have your data, how it has been collected, and so on. And then you also try to kind of set if you follow certain standards when sampling this, or if you kind of, and you are likely, if you have several data sets, you are likely to provide how it relates to a metadatabase, meta where to find it, and so on. But you can also, um, uh, the ma the, a metadata base uh, may also be provided in the project if you provide a lot of information. Uh, I would like to highlight here that if you work with big data, for instance, um, you have a special challenge in identifying all the data that you wish to use that is out there. And by combining new data sets, you actually pro d develop new information. And uh, especially for so social scientists, but also I see more and more in technologies and the natural sciences, we see that you need to get into the GDP, consider GDPRs. So ensure that personal data protection is in place. Uh, then, in, then you would need to look also into the data sharing, if this is open data, and where you are going to archive the data. And finally, also perhaps indicate how the data can be used for visualization or uh, in decision making and so on. It sounds to me that this is a big task for a PhD at the very beginning of a project. It, and it also resembles somewhat the, uh, like, uh, the entire project description. Is there a link between the two? Uh, I recommend that you include the data management plan in your project description because that ensures that you can visit it regularly. I suggest that you visit your project de description, including your data management plan, annually when you kind of report to the faculty that you are in, in time, on time and in shape. And um, that gives you the opportunity to elaborate and develop this data management plan as a kind of living document throughout your PhD period of three or four years. A living document, you say. So it is possible to change your mind. I think that things are moving fast these days. And uh, even if you have a plan, it's a plan. And uh, you need to update it uh, during your project so that it's accurate enough, precise enough, so it work, it's kind of a guideline for you and your supervisors, very often many of them. So you have something written and that you have agreed on how to perform. For instance, the discussion on open data and open science, it really is good for you as, in, as a PhD student if you can provide a DOI number and say there is the data that I made or developed. Uh, but if you then, and if you have this written, it's easy to follow that plan. Uh, and you may not end up in a kind of awkward situation where 
one of your supervisors suddenly finds out that no, we keep this, we protect this data and we apply for a, a IPR right or something. Because that, that, that will prolong your own uh, process and, and f the finalizing of your, of your thesis. Yes, yeah, so there are several ways then in which this can actually help you progress through your thesis and be finished in time. Definitely, and I think especially, I think many PhD students, when you go there and talk about the data management plan with your supervisor, the supervisor might not be always very well prepared. So you may perhaps end up in the situation that you have to go uh, to your university library, our homepages, and find out about what set of rules you have and what kind of guidelines you can find, and even present it to your supervisor. And when you are there, then during the lifetime of the project, make it more uh, specific. Um, can it also be helpful to you after you finish your PhD? Uh, definitely, because if you have uploaded this now, let's say database, if you are an EU project or your university doesn't have an old depository, you would perhaps put your data in uh, Zenodo or another open source database, perhaps connected to your field, and you would then get a DOI number. So that is a referable uh, data set. And of course, uh, when making this available, uh, you may perhaps after a year or so show that three or five people or even hundred have used your data for further publication and use. And that's of course uh, a good thing on your CV. You mentioned the existence of different repositories. Some mm -hmm. are uh, general repositories, international ones, some are perhaps located at the local mm -hmm. university library, mm -hmm. but they are also international in terms of DOI so that they can be searched for and found uh, anywhere in the world. But the research data management plan, do you actually need, if you start your PhD, to plan ahead to the publication of the data? Do you need to plan everything till the very end? I definitely should su suggest that you do so. Uh, and the plan is there, it's a plan, so you can change it and adjust it to ensure that it then fits your aims. But bring it up annually at least with your supervisors. Uh, and uh, perhaps when you bring up your project description and uh, go through it and ensure that it is in line with all your expectations uh, so that you're all on the same page and then kind of it saves you from a lot of uh, has, uh, hazards or, or barriers in identifying how it could be done in the last minute. We have identified also where both papers and uh, data have been uploaded in a place where you don't get a DOI number. And that is of course not then applicable with, for instance, National Research Council rules or the European uh, Council. What about the data management plans as such. Is that more like a, a personal thing between you and your supervisor then? So that's not what you publish afterwards, just to make that clear. Uh, I don't consider the data management plan something that you publish, but you will, uh, when you, the data management plan, the context of that plan is very nice to have it attached to your data as an introduction, as a d description of your data. So much of that work is done in your data management plan. So when you upload your data, you need to give it a name. You need to tell how the data was achieved. So you need to provide some information. And that is, of course, then lately updated in your latest version of your data management plan, makes it easy. I also want to highlight the fact that very many journals these days uh, request that you provide the data and the code. So you can repeat, anybody can repeat the exercise. And uh, in that sense, it's also a good thing to have ready to go for anybody to use. Most students, PhD students, they plan to um, themselves collect data, or mm -hmm. they collect them in a, in a group in a research project. But still, it's, it's data that has, that has been assembled during the project period. But mm -hmm. sometimes, I know that PhDs, they, they merge them with other people's data, uh, or even PhDs that use only other people's data. Yeah, uh, it's, it's getting very common now, because the PhD program of three years, you might not even have the time to go out at sea. And now during COVID-19, we've seen that many students 
have lost their whole field per period of going into the field. They don't get access to the surveys and so on. So it's more likely that we have even more students working on big data sets that they receive from statistics, from, the F, uh, from, from FAO, from national statistics, or even from colleagues um, in health science and uh, when you work, into, work with um, uh, machine learning and so on, you very easily collect data from different sources. And uh, of course, when you then de develop your data management plan, you have to be really careful to explain what data you have received, where you got it from, who owns it, was it openly accessible or not, and then show how you, and demonstrate how you kind of compile new data sets by using this previous data. And of course, in this connection, uh, I again want to stress the issue with big data and machine learning, that when combining data sets, you may easily end up in a situation where you reveal uh, information about individuals that you shouldn't. So this is something that you should keep in mind. Yeah, the, the GDPR that is now being talked more and more about, what is that in general? I mean, what is it that you need to be aware of? So in, in general, you would say that the GDPR general data uh, protection regulation, it is to ensure that the personal information is not distributed to anybody. So if my inf information is about my address, my health condition is somehow combined, I'm even a Finn and I'm probably the only one living on that street being a Finn and there is some health information, even if my name is not there, the information about me is available. So kind of by combining my address and my health condition and my nationality that might have been in three different data sets, when they are combined, there is delicate information about me. Yeah, so in the data management plan, this has to be described how to avoid these delicate situations Definitely. where you reveal too much about yeah. somebody. Yeah. Um, uh, how then about uh, the rights of data? I mean, if you merge with other people's data sets, do you, mm. can you be sure that you are allowed? You should always ask for promise and, and explain what, for what kind of a project you are using the data. If they are openly accessible international and national statistics, it's perfectly fine. But if you get data, for instance, from a health institution, from a um, private institution, all environmental data should actually be openly accessible by now from all your na national institutions. But still the institution would like to know for what purpose you're going to use this data. And it's also a way for them to promote that the data is uh, used and made kind of useful for the community. So it's a good habit actually to tell, the, to tell the provider of the data that you wish to use it for what you want to use it and also for what time frame. Uh, as soon as there are some delicate information or it's privately achieved, you are usually asked to delete the data after project end. But with the open accessibility and uh, now making data available, you would of course try to bargain and say, I ensure that there are no kinds of problematic issues with this data, that I don't have a, a that I don't break the GDPR and that I will be fine in, in making it openly accessible. Uh, one thing, if the data is not openly accessible, you need to argue why. So let's say you go out there and interview businesses or you get access to their books, bookkeeping, and say, okay, some go, some does better than others. The businesses don't want you really to make that data available. That is a very good reason for not making data available. But you can still conclude on the basis of having access to that information, but you wouldn't explicitly say this business is doing bad or this is doing wrong you, or, or doing better, but you would uh, perhaps, perhaps indicate the success rate among uh, businesses in a certain field. And thereby you would probably, you would promise to delete the data after project end. Um, there are some disciplines where perhaps the PhDs don't feel that they are, they are not into data, data at all because mm. they, they work in the humanities, for instance, or arts. Uh, um, should they write a data management plan if they don't plan to to uh, collect any data? Uh, I think that one should kind of think of data as a 
bigger concept than just numbers. Uh, and uh, of course, if you work as a social scientist, interview people and so on, you will probably perhaps transi transcript that interview and put it into a text analysis. So in that sense, your text is a set of data. But if you work with arts, um, a piece of, uh, kind of, if you provide a piece of art, or pictures, uh, videos of your installations, other things may be relevant for documentation and in that sense a data management uh, plan for how to document and keep track of these pictures uh, may be a good solution. Mikaela Askan, thank you very much. Thank you, it was a pleasure.